Assalamu alaikum, good evening. Welcome to another edition of live, a uh, live edition of Huda tonight. This program provides you with some of the latest news and information from around the Muslim world. We also provide in-depth discussions about a variety of topics that are relevant to Muslim life. Uh, today on the Islamic calendar is the fourth day of Safar, the year 1436. And on the Christian calendar, today is the 26th of November, the year 2014. We do appreciate you tuning in and hope you appreciate and benefit from what we provide for you in the program. Uh, for our new segment tonight, we have some a significant uh, political development from Israel. Uh, the cabinet has recently passed a measure that would, uh, has been described as the most uh, uh, divisive in the history of Israel. Uh, this would make the uh, Israel a Jewish-only state, uh, according to the law. Uh, they have not passed this. This is a bill by the cabinet. Uh, we'll take a closer look at this situation. Also, uh, we will go to look at a rescue operation by the government of Turkey. A group of Chinese Muslims have been stranded in Thailand, and they have intervened in the situation, fearing that these Chinese Muslims, hundreds of them, could face the death penalty by the Chinese government. Uh, also, we will go uh, to look at uh, the uh, health minister, a statement, an announcement by the uh, health minister in India. They are uh, looking to make the tobacco and cigarette laws more stricter to discourage smoking uh, in uh, India. Uh, also, we go to the United States to look at a, uh, there's an Islamic art exhibit uh, at the, uh, the Chicago Institute of Art in the U.S. state of Illinois. Just a few items from this evening's news segment. Uh, following the news segment tonight for our social segment, we're going to have an in-depth discussion about Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is a one-week-long campaign that we have launched. We will continue with the information providing background information, a look, a very important look at some of the important aspects of Al-Aqsa Mosque in Islam. We're going to be joined by our dear brother, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Sabir uh, from the UK. Also following this discussion, we're joined by a dentist, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mahmoud Sharwawi. Uh, he is going to uh, join with us to talk about uh, some of the common problems that we experience in our dental, maintaining our dental health. Uh, so we look forward to both of these very informative, very useful uh, uh, discussions to provide us with uh, uh, good information, inshallah. Uh, we'll take a short break and then come back with our new segment. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, good evening and welcome back to Huda Tonight. This is our news segment. We'll start with our first item. We'll go to China, actually in uh, Thailand. There's a group of 300 Chinese Muslims. They have been detained by the authorities in Thailand uh, with counterfeit passports. Now, the Thai authorities, uh, in collaboration with the Chinese government, uh, they, these people, they could face the death penalty uh, if there is not uh, uh, at the end of their, uh, their investigation. Uh, however, the Turkish government uh, has moved to intervene, allowing them to go to Turkey. Uh, if the uh, Chinese uh, Uyghur Muslims uh, are, are not accepted into Turkey, they will either be given the death penalty uh, if they escape, then they may possible, uh, possibly be victims of uh, human kidnapping or organ trafficking. This is some of the uh, reasons that have possibly led up to this situation. They fell victim to human traffickers who use them for organs and other uh, purposes. Uh, the uh, Uyghur, the uh, Chinese Uyghur Muslims, they're facing a persecution by the Chinese government, uh, making their lives as Muslim very difficult, passing a number of laws uh, prohibiting them from practicing certain uh, things. Uh, they had a bus ban of those with beards uh, boarding buses. They prohibited uh, government employees uh, in this area where they came from in western China uh, from f fasting during the holy month of Ramadan. A number of ta uh, uh, steps have been taken by the government to uh, make the life very difficult for the Uyghur Muslims. They are fleeing these conditions. They were caught up by hu human traffickers. They're being detained in Thailand. The Turkish government uh, is looking to step in to save their, literally save their lives. Uh, they were attempting to reach Turkey via Malaysia. Uh, the police, they found the group of people in the forest under very desperate circumstances. They were hungry and very thirsty. 
uh, the Thai police. Uh, they will attempt to confirm the identity of the citizens uh, before determining their fate. However, again, the Turkish government is acting very quickly, uh, saying that they will provide uh, the transport to allow them to migrate into Turkey. The prime minister, he explained uh, that he's been following this matter very closely. He's very concerned about the status of these Muslims caught up in this situation. Uh, and if uh, they are, in fact, not able to be transferred to the possession of Turkey, uh, they could be put to death by a firing squad by the Chinese government. Uh, so we hope for the best in this situation. Uh, they have these false or these counterfeit passports uh, traveling on an arduous journey, uh, leaving from Western China, uh, trying to make their way to Malaysia, caught up, ended up in Thailand with the hope of trying to get to Turkey. Very uh, complex uh, situation. We'll, c we'll continue to follow the situation and hope that we can have uh, good news, inshallah. Uh, for our next item, we go to an issue related to Palestine. This is the European Union Parliament. Uh, they ha are set to debate on the statehood of Palestine uh, tomorrow. Uh, the senior, uh, one of the senior European Union diplomats reportedly said that the pro uh, recognition of feeling within the European uh, Union is a frustration that Israel is ignoring uh, called by uh, the international community, particularly Europe, to end its settlement expansion. Uh, several uh, condemnations by European countries with regard to settlement expansion and this retaliatory demolition of Palestinian homes uh, has uh, predictably, uh, it's been ignored by, of course, uh, the government uh, of Israel. Uh, the measure was uh, presented by a European United Left Party, uh, a, a, an alliance by the progressives as well as socialists and Democrats. All these political uh, 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 elements in the European Union came together to formulate this draft resolution recognizing the state of Israel. However, uh, if it is in fact passed, they're going to debate on it and vote on it tomorrow. Uh, it would be non-binding, meaning, meaning that it would not directly affect or change the policies related to Israel or uh, to Palestine. However, it would be a very important symbolic gesture. We've been seeing a number of European states take this move, and this would be uh, a representation of all the EU states. Inshallah, they can pass it successfully. Uh, Israel's ambassador uh, to the EU, David Walzer, uh, he's been meeting with uh, political advisors, uh, trying to dissuade them from recognizing Palestine. This is not a surprise. Uh, German's uh, uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel, she declared uh, support for the two-state solution. However, she qualified her remarks, adding that the uh, unilateral recognition of pa the Palestinian state would not be helpful to the process. So she is uh, Germany communicating, expressing their alleged uh, commitment to Israel, uh, yet she says they are committed to the two-state solution. This would be a very important development. We hope, inshallah, uh, that they can pass this by the European Union, recognizing Palestine at least in a symbolic, symbolic fashion. We'll go to a, a decision that has been recently made for our next item by the Israeli uh, cabinet. On Sunday, they passed a bill that aims to legally change Israel to a Jewish-only state. Uh, the measure is being widely described as Israel's most discriminatory and racist acts in the history of Israel. It's also proving to be the most highly divisive within the Israeli political establishment. The Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO, uh, has strongly condemned and, uh, this Israeli government for approving the bill. Uh, on Tuesday, the PLO's executive committee said that the bill aimed to undermine the so-called two-state solution. Palestinians also said that Israel would use this uh, as a way to deny Palestinian refugees the right of return. A, a law professor at Israel's Democracy Institute, uh, Mordecai uh, Krimnitzer, he said that the measure opens the way to dis legal discrimination. Uh, Krimnitzer, he said that the courtroom, in the courtroom, the, the Israeli judges uh, may interpret this if it is in fact passed as a principle for the supremacy of the Jewish foundation at the expense of a democratic foundation in Israel. Uh, meanwhile, the Israeli uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, he along with other right-wing po politicians 
they say that the proposed law uh, is essential to protecting Israel's identity uh, against uh, those who are questioning uh, the right of Israel to exist. Uh, Netanyahu said that the quote, the Palestinians refuse to recognize this and there are also opposition from within. He's referring to uh, opposition from within the Israeli political establishment against recognizing Israel as a Jewish state. Uh, so we see a number of sides to this story uh, against this bill. Uh, Israeli politicians themselves from across the political spectrum uh, and also, uh, of course, outside within the, the Palestinian. Uh, also, the bill, there are three versions of this bill. Some of the language in one that was drafted by the Likud party wants to remove the Arabic language as an official language in the state of Israel. Uh, the uh, parliament, the Israeli parliament, they are scheduled to vote on this bill proposed by the Israeli cabinet uh, next week on Wednesday. Uh, we look forward to the outcome uh, of this vote that will be taken next week on Wednesday about determining or legally classifying Israel as a Jewish state. Uh, we'll move to our next story. There's a political development here in Kashmir. Uh, the, this is uh, the Kashmiri voters. They went on Tuesday, they turning out in very high numbers to choose the members of the Jammu and Kashmir State Assembly, uh, despite the fact that there were freezing temperatures uh, at the polling stations. Uh, they were, there was tight security with voters lined up at 15 different constituencies, participating in the first stage of a staggered election to determine the composition of this 87 uh, lawmaking body, ignoring uh, there was a call by separatist leaders to boycott the elections. Yet again, the authorities reported very high numbers of voters turning out to participate. Uh, India's ruling BJP party, this is the party of India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Uh, they are attempting to take control of the state assembly in Kashmir. Uh, this is a historic effort because the BJP party uh, traditionally has had no voter base in Kashmir. Uh, the Indian Prime Minister uh, uh, Modi, he uh, had this landslide victory, uh, uh, making him again the Prime Minister of India. Uh, the Election Commission said despite these calls by separatist leaders to boycott the election, there were 70 percent. The numbers of those turning out to vote were 70 percent, and this was before the elections were closed. Uh, so they expect these numbers to continue to climb. Uh, by now, they have closed these offices, and tomorrow we can see uh, that uh, they, they have ignored, the voters have ignored these calls to boycott uh, the elections in Kashmir, determining uh, who's going to sit on the state assembly. We'll go to a story related to Afghanistan. This is about the United States and the number of troops that are there uh, in the country. Uh, the United States is preparing to increase the number of troops uh, that they will leave behind in Afghanistan uh, up to the year 2015, just next year. Uh, they want to say, they said they want to fill in the gaps of uh, NATO member countries uh, according to three sources, uh, a direct knowledge of these uh, negotiations about the numbers of U.S. forces remaining in Afghanistan. The final numbers have not yet been excuse me, determined, they depend on these ongoing discussions. Uh, they said depended on whether or not uh, other countries involved are able to keep their commitments in Afghanistan, uh, but there will be at least several hundred, up to 1,000 uh, additional U.S. soldiers that will remain in Afghanistan. That's uh, more than we had, uh, were told would, would remain behind. Under uh, this U.S. commitment that's described as a bridging solution, uh, until other nations fulfill their pledges later in the year, troops will uh, no longer, are longer uh, when they discover, they realize once the other countries com meet their uh, commitments, uh, there's no longer a need that the U.S. soldiers will be uh, reduced. Uh, so uh, this is uh, just an update on the situation in Afghanistan with the expected withdrawal of the Western forces in on, the, on the ground in Afghanistan. U.S. is saying that because of some of the delays with NATO forces, they will continue uh, to uh, and even increase the number by up to 1,000 additional soldiers. We'll go to an announcement made for our next story about by the Indian Health Minister. 
uh, J.P. Nada on Tuesday. Uh, he said that his ministry has circulated a draft resolution to amend the country's cigarette and tobacco laws that were enacted uh, in 2003. Uh, they want to discourage smoking in the country. Uh, Nada, he took over as health minister in India earlier this month. Uh, he says that the proposal includes a blanket ban on the sale of loose cigarettes, uh, as well as an increase in the minimum age to purchase tobacco products and an increased penalty for smoking in public places. The cabinet is expected to uh, clear uh, the proposed amendment, which will, uh, would be brought before the parliament for its approval at some point during uh, the winter season. We don't have an exact date, but it's gonna be presented to the Indian parliament during this, uh, the next few uh, weeks and months. Uh, nearly 70% of the cigarettes in India that are sold on the streets are sold as loose cigarettes uh, because they cannot, most people cannot afford to buy whole packs of cigarettes. Uh, so uh, we appreciate this effort. Uh, this is a very unhealthy habit uh, and we hope inshallah that the Indian government can take measures to discourage especially young young people from take picking up a new habit. Once you pick up this habit of smoking, it's very, very difficult to stop. Uh, so anything that they can do to stop and discourage young people from starting the habit, alhamdulillah, this is not in keeping with Islam. It, it's very harmful to, to the body and the science, the medical science in this is very clear. Uh, we will go for our next item to the United States, to the uh, US state of Illinois at the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, there are a number of uh, articles and items that have been collected at this art exhibit. Uh, it includes uh, a hundred uh, pieces altogether. They range from a small tiles, uh, utensils, large architectural objects, uh, uh, including a pair of 12-foot uh, wooden doors that date back to the 14th century coming from Morocco. Uh, new calligraphy acquisitions also will be uh, on display. Uh, those date back to the 12th and the 13th centuries. These are uh, calligraphy copies of the Holy Quran. They're colored uh, very vividly uh, with ink, uh, of course, on paper. Another display shows an art producer uh, of the Mongols in Iran between the years of the, the 13th and the 14th centuries. The curator of this uh, collection, da uh, Daniel Walker, says that the collection, it spans the entire Muslim world, uh, including uh, Spain uh, to Morocco, Central Asia, and also all the way into Indonesia. Very uh, nice collection that they've put together for uh, not only Muslims, but those interested in Muslim history uh, to take advantage of in the U.S. city of Chicago. Uh, we'll go to uh, the world of science and technology for our next item. This is a very significant development in the area of science. You know, we studied the chemistry when we were in school. We studied the periodic table and learned the breakdown of the different elements. Uh, well, now the scientists, this is a team of scientists in Europe at the CERN. Th this is the European Organization for Nuclear Research, uh, known as CERN, C-E-R-N. They announced on Wednesday the discovery of two new subatomic particles that were never before realized. Uh, the, one of the uh, scientists, uh, Matthew Charles of the National Research Center in Paris, said that nature was very kind and gave us two particles for the price of one. Uh, the new particles, they're called birons. They're made of three quirks bound together by a strong force. A CERN said, uh, that uh, the basic, atom uh, basic atomic particles, including protons and neutrons, are composed of quirks. These are uh, going down to the subatomic levels of what we and everything around us are made of. Allah used these materials. Scientists are using the highest levels of science to discover what Allah has, 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 has used and how he made a creation. We, we appreciate their efforts. Uh, the coordinator for this project said that that such high precision studies will help us to differentiate between standard model effects and anything new or unexpected in the future. Uh, so this will require 
uh, textbooks to be changed in our schools uh, because of the discovery of these two new subatomic particles. Uh, for our last item this evening, we will stay with the world of science and technology. There's a phenomenal uh, story here about a five-year-old Muslim boy in the United States uh, from uh, a uh, background uh, in Morocco. Uh, he has been certified. He's the youngest ever person to become a expert Microsoft uh, uh, certificate holder. Uh, he, again, is the youngest one uh, who's ever uh, taken and passed this, uh, this, this test, one of the many tests that they administer uh, by the Microsoft Corporation. Uh, in an interview, he said, this is a five-year-old young man, he said, I like compasses, I like telescopes, uh, but what I love the most are prisms. Uh, so he has made a very, uh, he has made history by becoming uh, the youngest person ever. These are very advanced levels of uh, understanding computer sciences. And he, at the age of five, has taken these tests uh, and passed them. Uh, undoubtedly, this young brother, his name, uh, Ayan Qureshi, uh, again, of Moroccan background. He is a, young, a Muslim young man in the United States uh, making history. Undoubtedly, he has a very bright future in the area of uh, computing science. We wish him the best uh, and uh, congratulate him and his family, inshallah. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the news segment. We will conclude here for tonight. We'll continue with more news and information tomorrow, inshallah. We will take a break now, look at the expected weather for tomorrow. Then we will come back for our social segment, tonight's two social topics. We will go to talk and open up the subject of the third holiest site in Islam, Al-Aqsa Mosque uh, in Palestine. Very important subject. We're going to be joined by Sheikh Mahmoud Shabir from the UK. This is our dear brother. We always appreciate him being with us. Also following this, we're going to be talking about common dental problems. We're going to be joined by a dentist. He's an Egyptian, Egyptian dentist here, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Sharawi. Inshallah, you can benefit and uh, uh, incorporate these, this information in your lives. We'll take a short break and be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hara tonight. This is our social t uh, segment tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking now about the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Again, this is the third holiest site in Islam following Mecca and Medina. We're joined by two very distinguished guests. Uh, uh, in the introduction, I failed to mention uh, our dear brother from Bangladesh, uh, Habirbu uh, Rahman. Assalamu alaikum to you, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Did I pronounce it correctly, your first name? Habibur Rahman. Habibur Rahman, <laughs> okay. Also, we're joined by Sheikh Mohammed Shabir uh, from the UK. Assalamu alaikum to you, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you both for joining us to talk about, about a very uh, important topic. And I don't know much about this. Um, and this week, as you know, we have a campaign dedicated to uh, opening up the subject of Al-Aqsa. And we want to continue that uh, this evening, inshallah. Can I give you, Sheikh, uh, the first question tonight? Um, uh, first, I'll just give it an open, uh, uh, open the floor <coughs> to you uh, to give an introduction and say anything that comes to mind to you uh, before we get into inshallah. Yes, our discussion. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I think it's a, a very, very important subject for Muslims mm. because Alexa is the, is the third holiest masjid in, in the world. Mm. And it's very close to, to our hearts. But issue here is that, that since the, uh, the beginning of Islam, yes. the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, <coughs> left us the very strong Islam. Hmm. And the first time the Muslims took over, Al-Aqsa was at the time of Sayyidina uh, Umar Farooq. And that was the time of strength. Hmm. And then 90 years in, in between, after many, many centuries, <coughs> it went back to the, the Christians. All right. Now, before you continue, I want to ask you a clarifying question. Yeah. What give us a date on a Christian calendar? What was the about the time frame? Was this the? I imagine that this was the seventh century, the early. Uh, it's the early seventh century. Uh, the, all right. Uh, the, 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 the time of Omar Razila Talano, his Khalifa. Uh. He we we that was the first time the Muslims were in control of Alexa. Okay, so this is over a thousand years ago. 
over over a thousand over one thousand three hundred years ago, or more yeah. than three hundred okay. years ago. Mm -hmm. And then later, which you know, I'm not really fully aware of the date, but mm -hmm. uh, many many centuries later, the 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 Christian Crusaders took it for ninety years. Okay. And then <laughs> Salahuddin came, mm. and we had it again until the 1967 when the war between the Arabs and the Israelis, the, the Jews took over. Mm, mm -hmm. So we have a long history. In the, in the, in the history <coughs> of Islam, uh, the, Isla the, the third masjid has been out of Muslim control from, for maybe just over a century. Right. In, in total, 1,435 years. That, that's a very short period of time. Yeah. Only 100 years. So less so than 100 so years. So alhamdulillah, mm. you know. Mm. But let's just <coughs> talk about the, the why we, we lost it. Mm. The in the first time, I, I'm not totally aware. I think the Muslims were very divided at that time as well. Mm -hmm. But the second time, when we took it, when we lost it, we lost it because, you know, when you're weak, nobody gives you things on the plate. Mm. You know, you have to demand your right and you have to take them. But the, the way both times the Muslims took Alexa, that is the beauty. That is what Muslims need to learn today, as well as the non-Muslim world. I was speaking to an, a, a Catholic historian, mm. and he told me that you had a wonderful man you know, in your history of Islam. I said, who was that? <laughs> he goes, that was Salahuddin. I said, how was he wonderful? He goes that in our history, when he took over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. there was no bloodshed. Mm. Salahuddin. In comparison mm -hmm. to when the Crusaders took it, yeah. He said the, the, the streets of Jerusalem were, were like rivers of blood. Rivers of blood. They not spared anybody. All right. Sheikh, I want to interrupt you. Thank you so much for a good <coughs> introduction. Uh, Brother uh, Habibu, um, please, uh, I want to just open the floor to you and give you the okay. same opportunity. Whatever is on your heart and mind right now, <coughs> uh, we can start with that. If you want to continue where the Sheikh was, it's, it's up to you. Alhamdulillah, uh, salatu wa salam wa ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'at. فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله الحمد لله first I wanna uh, say thanks to uh, our viewers who are watching our program mm -hmm. and I wanna say thanks to uh, Huda TV for choosing these wonderful uh, topics it's really important topics about Al-Aqsa <coughs> A topic about uh, how Muslim could protect Al-Aqsa Mosque. Yes. It's really important mm. uh, to talk about. Mm. So uh, I want to say how we can protect the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Mm -hmm. So first I want to say uh, if the Muslim, they want to protect Al-Aqsa uh, Al Mosque, mm -hmm. they must know they must understand what is the significance of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Yes. What, what is the importance of Al-Aqsa? What is the bill of Al-Aqsa? Mm. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Al-Aqsa? Mm -hmm. What the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Al-Aqsa? Yes. And uh, how was the condition of Al-Aqsa before and now? Mm. Uh, so if we want to uh, protect this mosque, if the Muslim or want to protect this mosque, must know what is the bill of Al-Aqsa. The, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith about this, uh, about this mosque. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first, uh, the Al-Aqsa mosque, it was the Qibla for wall messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Can you please repeat that? For a while, the Al-Aqsa was what? Al-Aqsa was the first uh, Qibla. Al-Aqsa was the Qibla for walls and beer. Was mm, uh, prophets. You, 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 you understood. You mean I the mean same now in yeah, our time? It was. The in Mecca, we have the Kaaba and we go and make pilgrimage and circumbobulate. At one time, Al Aqsa was this? Uh, yeah, Al Aqsa was no, the no, Qibla. No, not precisely. Okay, not, not precisely. precisely. Okay, not precisely. we'll clarify it in just a second, Sheikh. Inshallah. All right, please continue. And so Al Aqsa was the Qibla. Mm. You, you understood the Qibla. Qibla to the Jamia al Anbiya. It was the Qibla for all prophets. After, before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After that, okay. uh, the on. Prophet Muhammad, it was the first Qibla for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm. The Muslims uh, in the period of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was prayed, uh, they were praying uh, to Al-Aqsa ah, Mosque. Ah, ah. So when uh, you say Qibla, you mean the direction? Yeah, yeah, direction. Ah, the important distinction. <laughs> yeah, All right, yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Uh, yes. So Al-Aqsa is the first 
Qibla for Muslims. Mm. It's the first Qibla for us, reelection for Muslims. Wow, okay. Muslims were uh, praying to Al-Aqsa. Mm -hmm. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, said in a hadith, uh, hadith said, uh, uh, narrated Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, uh, an Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي وهو بمكة نحو بيت المقدس والكعبة بين يديه. ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه said the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was the praying praying to Al Aqsa praying to Al Aqsa but he was inside of مكة inside of مكة and the Kaaba was in front of him but he was praying to Al Aqsa Al Aqsa and after he immigrated to Medina from مكة to Medina after he immigrated they were praying to Al Aqsa about 16 months after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed this Kaaba from Baytul Muqaddas to Baytullah I mean Masjid Al Haram in uh, in Mecca. Mecca. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's changed. So the uh, Muslims they were praying to Al Aqsa 16 months. So so this was not a small thing by any means. Uh, yes, of course. If we if all Muslims <laughs> in the world at that time were directing themselves to make the five daily yeah, prayers yeah, yes. to Jerusalem, this is a very significant. Uh, and we know that Al Aqsa is the second mosque in the old. It's the, the second mosque. The second, yeah, second mosque, mosque that was constructed yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. the world. Yes, yes. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, the first mosque is the Al-Haram, al Al-Mosque. Haram, the first. Masjid Al-Haram uh. in Makkah. Mm -hmm. And the second mosque is Al-Aqsa. <coughs> Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, hadith narrated uh, by Abi Hu, Abi Dharrin radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, an Abi Dharrin radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala, قلت يا رسول الله أي مسجد وضي في الأرض أول قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المسجد الحرام ثم قلت وأي مسجد وضي في الأرض ثانيا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المسجد الأقصى uh, narrated this hadith by Abu uh, Dharin radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He asked to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is mosque? Uh, founded with uh, who is mosque built in the earth first prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the al haram al haram mosque yeah. and who is one is second mosque uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, said the al aqsa mosque all right so okay. it is the second mosque second uh, in, in, the in, earth. in islam in the world yeah, thank you so much for this uh, very good important information you said something very important um, you said in the start of your comments, yes, uh, yes. you said uh, you <coughs> talked about the need to protect Al-Aqsa. Yeah, of course. Sheikh, I want to ask you about this protection. Is this one of our duties? Is this one of our responsibilities as Muslims to protect, keeping his word, uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque? I think that, l let's just historically not forget that, you know, the, the Al-Aqsa or the, 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 the Rock of the Dome mm -hmm. is holy to all three religions mm. uh, from, from the sky, which is Christianity, Judaic, and, and Muslims. Mm. So all the, as the Sheikh mentions, all the prophets, their, their direction of prayer were towards the, the Alexa, the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims. Mm. And then Rasulullah's wish were to, to change that to with, within his heart was to change towards Makkah mm. and Kaaba. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him that 16 months into migration mm. at Masjid al During the prayer, they was pressing the Alexa and then the order came and the Rasulullah turned around and, and walked around the, the, the Sahaba and faced the other way. And the Sahaba changed accordingly. So the, the beauty is that, you know, the Muslims, uh, you know, need to protect the Alexa, mm. which as I mentioned, you know, we, we're going to have to uh, work hard for that. Mm. But let's not forget that, that, you know, we have to respect whatever uh, the, the other religion may be, however distorted they might be, mm -hmm. but they have certain rights okay. to that, that uh, place as well. Yeah. So the, Mus the Muslims have the, the area of the mosque itself. Mm -hmm. It's a whole complex. 
Okay. It's not. It's not just a single building. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a whole complex, mm -hmm. and there is a, there's a wall that you see uh, in on the TV that you know the the Jews the Western are wailing the, yes, wall, uh -huh. and and you know there's many other areas. Mm. Uh, so so you know the 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 area for of the of the masjid is is sacred to Muslims mm. because that's where Rasulullah took uh, the uh, the journey from Mecca to Al Masjid Al Aqsa and then to the seven seven heavens and prayed and led the all the, uh, uh, the the messengers of Allah. So that is that is precious and needs protecting by Muslims. And it was by and large, even though it's under Jewish control, but it is actually uh, devoted to Muslims and Islam at the moment. But the Jews also want to enter and and pray in that same area. All right, but, but uh, Sheikh, as you know, in the news we see many times particularly this year, I think there's been a spike, according to the authorities, an increase in the number of particularly Zionist-charged Zionist Israelis going to the mosque. Uh, is it true that there are designated areas at the compound mm -hmm. for Muslims and another designated area for the Jews to pray? So that everyone, like you say, can share this compound to fulfill their re respective of course. religious duties. Of course, as long as they keep, they keep to their areas. Mm -hmm. And this is where you have problems. Like we have the extreme element in Islam, mm -hmm. the Jews also have, have an extreme especially element. The, the, yeah. the Zionists. Yeah. And they have a very strong agenda. If they could have it their way, mm -hmm. you see, because it's under their control, they will, they will throw out Muslims altogether. And, and, and so this is the objective. And their objective maybe is to, to demolish the Al-Aqsa altogether and build their uh, their synagogue there. Wow, this so is quite quite extreme. If this is in fact their agenda, uh, do we have any Muslims calling for the destruction of the Western Wall or the areas where Jews pray? Or is this something that we only see from the, the extreme uh, Jews? Well, this, this sad thing, as I mentioned earlier, is the, is the weakness of the Ummah. You know, the weakness in whites invasion. You know, and people come and take over, and and all the 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 element in in the in the Jewish state, mm -hmm. especially the uh, the Zionists, they they really have no mercy, no mm. uh, you know soft heart for for Muslims. Yeah, you know, and we know that. Mm. And and the problem is that the the world at large cannot stop them, mm. because because let me give you an example. At the moment. The, the knowledge comparison. There's the, the first wahi and Rasulullah were about the knowledge, the Ikra. Where, are, where is the Ikra for Muslims today? We have become the nation of La Ikra. I, I'm sorry, Ikra. What is this term? Ikra means read. R read. Read. Ah. And, and Muslims today, uh, in, in knowledge, where are we? Look at the, the, the comparison with Jewish state. They are 9 to 13 percent of the population of PhD holders. Mm. Whereas the Muslim today, Muslim today, maybe one in a million PhD. It's not the quantity, it's the, it's the quality. Yeah. And they are, they've taken that from the, the Muslims, the Islamic leaf, the knowledge, the value of knowledge, and knowledge gives power. And today, whether they're backed by Americans or Europeans or the rest of the world, they, they have the power. Yeah. And they've taken over. Hmm. And they are bit by bit taking the, the Palestinian lands, hmm bit by bit taking the, uh, the Alexa complex right. and the Muslims are, uh, look at the state of Muslims today. The other big problem we have is disunity. Allah the Quran says, Take hold the rope of Allah mm -hmm. and don't split um, amongst your ranks. Right. Yeah? And, and be, be firm and together. Mm. And we are, not, we are no, no state uh, today, we are more it's more divided than ever before. And, and, this and, and, and this we want to take back the Alexa. Uh, how is that going to be possible? If we're dis disunited? Disunited, yeah. Disunited. Yeah. So, so, so uh, uh, brother, brother, thank you. I want to uh, bring you in on this conversation and ask yeah. you about uh, the, the Sheikh here is talking about the history, the, the overall arc of Muslim history. Right now, we're in a period of time uh, that uh, less than 100 years where there is some a weakening or dis in terms of the, the political power. I don't want to politicize the whole conversation, no, no, no. But, but is this the first time uh, that we've seen 
this situation where a foreign power is, is sitting in the Holy Mosque? What, how do we handle such situations in the past if there were ever a, another foreign occupying power? Uh, well, I wanted to tell uh, first the significance of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, you know, this uh, uh, it's our it's our direction. It's our uh, second mosque, and uh, it has a lot of significance. Uh, actually, Al-Aqsa Mosque it was under uh, under the Muslims in period of Omar. After that, uh, Salah Uddin Ayyubi he got he opened this mosque, and right now it's under the Jewish uh, this mosque. But how we can protect? How we can protect this mosque? We are Muslims. Mm. The Jerusalem is our place. It's a holy land. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in Quran, uh, our Prophet uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he called uh, to his nation to come uh, to enter in this holy land, uh, and uh, this is our our land, our holy land, yeah. and the mosque Al Aqsa Mosque is our mosque. Mm. So. It's not under the Muslims now, it's under the Jewish. So what can we do to protect in this mosque? Uh, so I think at, at first we are Muslim. Uh, our, if our Iman is, our Iman, our believing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is strong. Mm -hmm. If we have powerful Iman, powerful believe, believing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can uh, protect this mosque. And mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us to protect uh, this mosque. Mm. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah said, وَلَا تَهِنُوا uh, No tension. وَلَا تَحِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا No fear, no afraid, no tension. وَأَنْتُمُ mm. الْأَعْلَوْنَ You will be win in كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are a mu'min, if you are believed to Allah, mm. if you are flowed to Allah, if you flow to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and if you flow to Quran, you will be win. So no tension, no afraid, you yeah. will be win. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if we are mu'min, so if we have a strong iman, mm. if we have a strong iman, if we practice Islam very well, after that we try to protect this Al-Aqsa Mosque, we can protect it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. Yes. Uh, <coughs> so, so yeah, thank you for answering. We, we go back in history and we saw, uh, as the Sheikh said, times in history where the Muslims, uh, for a period of 90 years, the Christians had come down from Europe, and we were able to retake control without bloodshed. Um, you said something that I thought <coughs> was, was very, uh, very important. Um, the problem is not Judaism and Jews. No. Uh, for many thousands of years, uh, hundreds of years, uh, we commonly shared um, this, this holy site for our respective faiths. Um, so I want to stress the fact that the problem is not Jewish people or the Jewish faith. Uh, yes. the, dif the matters of differences of faith is a matter only for, for Allah, right? Mm. <laughs> so the problem is a particular type of thinking, right? A, a, type, a type of governance uh, and, uh, and with a particular, uh, a very strong form of backing. Um, <coughs> Yeah, we, we, have, we have the community of a Jewish community living in Manchester where my grandchildren, uh, you know, my granddaughter Sarah, mm -hmm. you know, uh, our neighbors w were Jewish. And our, my, my grandchildren, Fahad, Sarah, w used to pray with them. Yes. And we, we used to have a very close bond with them. Mm -hmm. And we know, I know because I have very close links with that community through the very centers in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Some of the Jewish community, Jews, were against the state of Israel treating the Palestinians so badly. That's right. I tell you something, I know many, many Jews that boycotted, not the Muslims, Jews boycotted Jews, made yeah. in Israel mm -hmm. because of on that principle yeah. that they treat uh, the Palestinians so badly. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's see if Muslims can be that impartial as well. Mm. In some way, if the Muslims are doing something wrong, we should condemn it just like y the Jews do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, not all Jews are bad. It's not, it's not a Jewish Muslim issue. It's, it's a false it's uh, dichotomy. It's, yeah. it's actually mm. the, uh, the, uh, the Zionists and even the extreme element, you know, within the Jewish community in, uh, in Jerusalem and in Israel, mm -hmm. that is pushing that agenda. Mm. And they have, uh, of course, enough friends, you know, to, to back them up. Yeah. So, you know, without uh, politicizing it too much, yeah. I think that, you know, that, that well, let's just 
uh, keep it like a, a human issue. Mm. You know, we, we're all, all the different religions, uh, uh, especially the three, the, the Christians, the Jews and the Muslims, yes. they all got revelations from God. Mm. And they all have a very, very same agenda. Mm. Basically, we differ on very little. And that little sometimes enough to keep us at, you know, at each other's throat. And I think it, it, it damages everybody. And I think that, that you know, really this issue, uh, it, it needs outside interference. And United States, being the, the, the most powerful country on the face of the earth, uh, can play a vital part in that. Yeah. And if United States seems to be fair in this, then you know, it will earn a lot of respect. Not right. from Muslim world, but from world all around. That's right. But the problem is that even the, the, the some of the Zionist lobby in, in America is so strong, mm. even the president of the United States sometimes is totally helpless. Mm. They say he's the most powerful man on the face of the earth. But I've, s I've read the, 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 the biographies of pres uh, President Clinton yeah. and other presidents, and they say sometimes we are the most, most powerless people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we know <laughs> that things should be done, but we can't do them. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so, yeah. so there is there is there is the problems. Uh, you know, we sometimes say that you know why doesn't the the government of the United States do this and this mm -hmm. and president do this? Mm -hmm. But you know, their their hands are tied. Mm -hmm. You know, the, because the, the system of government there and the, and the lobbies are so strong. Yeah, they're just helpless. Mm -hmm. And and I think you know sometimes we just need to maybe work just like they do and make our lobbies you know strong and sensible and smart. So, so, so there may be a sitting president in the White House who sympathizes with the cause of the Palestinians, but because he's not a monarch or a dictator, he can just order things with himself. Yes. He has to go with, um, he, he's beholden to the, the system that he's Look with. at the President Obama's speech in Cairo University, not far from here, mm -hmm. when he first became president. He, he, right. He came and he said things and I tell you something, I read Jewish press sometimes, you know, on the internet, and I sometimes buy the newspapers. And you know, after that speech, they were so worried. They said that we literally, for, uh, for almost 70 years, we got away with, literally got away with murder. Uh -huh. But now that we think the time has come, there things are gonna change, <laughs> yeah? But they work and they manipulated the system. Within the next two, three years, President Obama was helpless. He couldn't do anything. You know, he couldn't carry out his, his convictions, his yeah, agenda, yeah. and he was actually, what happens is, the, sometimes the president comes into the White House mm -hmm. to change America, yeah? But the White House and the America changes the president. Mm. This is what happens in most of the cases, yeah. because when you're outside, you have you know, your, your ideas and things that you can do, but once you get inside, it's not plain it's, it's, it's different. Yeah, and the politics, are, the not, politics yeah. are not straightforward. Uh, and that's, that's the sad fact of you know, today's life, and the most powerful nation is, is behind the, the Jewish state and possibly uh, the, the Zionist as well. Mm. Uh, I don't know, I'm not so sure about that because I think that you know, the United States continually condemns some of the actions, the new settlements, mm. you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But and I think and that- And in this time, sorry, Sheikh, uh, we're, we're having a lot of uh, increased activity. Just tonight for the news segment, I talked about a vote that the European Union is gonna take, another symbolic vote uh, we've had a number of European countries take a look at officially recognizing uh, Palestine. Uh, before, I want to ask you, uh, brother, uh, about the history of the possession, the administrators, the governors of, uh, of this area. Uh, before we, we you answer this, uh, comparing and contrasting uh, Muslim rule in Al-Aqsa in Palestine to Christian rule. Uh, before you answer, we'll go to a report that we have prepared uh, we'll take a short, just uh, a couple minutes, then we'll come back and get the answer about uh, contrasting the Islamic and the Christian rule in Al-Aqsa, inshallah. For those people who are looking at the situation, the Muslimin around us, and say there is no hope for this Ummah, this Ummah is destroyed, there is no hope for it. Those who look at the situation of Islam and Muslims and the countries of, the, of Islam and Muslims being eaten up by other people. But Allah, I will tell you, every single person that has made an effect in this dunya was not a really great man before they became, became great. They were not particularly talented, not particularly educated, not particularly eloquent. They didn't need the permission of everybody. They didn't have the help of everyone as well. 
but Allah, they had one thing and one thing only, and that was a deep burning desire to achieve something. One day, the Prophet ﷺ stood up in the depths of the night. It is authentically reported in Al-Bukhari that he raised his hands up to the heavens and he said, Oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. He couldn't say more than that. He couldn't finish his sentences because he was so emotional. Until the night passed and the last third of the night came. Until Fajr time came. And at that point, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came down and said, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Allah has sent me and said, Ya Muhammad, your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. Your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. The question is, brothers and sisters of Islam, are we going to disappoint our Prophet sallallahu Are we going to disappoint our Prophet sallallahu Allah has promised our Prophet, he will not disappoint him regarding our ummah. The question is us, are we going to otherwise not fulfill the promise of Allah and be a disappointment for a Prophet Be you of those people who fulfill his vision. Remember about Allah, the Prophet was a very positive person. Be very positive about yourself. Be very positive that you can make a change. Be very positive that you will have an effect in changing the Ummah. Every single time, every single time, the believers in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet we're being negative, the Prophet was positive. Every single time. When Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, was in the bottom of the well, in his greatest moment of despair, there came upon him an angel by the name of Jibreel, who told him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him the following thing. Verily, O Yusuf, a day will come when you will tell them about what they have done. And by Allah, they will not even know that it is you telling them. And this is the positivity of Islam. When the mother of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, was despairing, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell her? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told her, throw Musa into the river. Indeed, my enemy will grab him. And then by Allah, out of Allah's mercy, in some way or the other, Allah will return Musa back to his mother so that she does not despair. Positivity in the eyes of negativity. When the people stood there and said, we're going to throw this little boy by the name of Ibrahim into this huge fire. What did Ibrahim say? Ibn Abbas said, this was said by three people. The first person who said it was Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. When the people all gathered together, built a huge fire to throw Ibrahim in there. What did he say? Positivity in the eyes of tremendous negativity. Hasbunallahu ni'mal wakil. Allah is our protector and enough is he a protector over us. For those people who are being harmed, who are being hurt by your families and by your situation now. But Allah, remember the situation, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah. And remember that he was also harmed and hurt for years and years. He was lashed until his, until his arms were out of his sockets. Yet he never gave up being upon the truth. For those who look at the situation of Islam and Muslims and the countries of, the, of Islam and Muslims being eaten up by other people. But Allah never despair. Let me tell you what Ibn Kathir says in his Bidaw al Nihaya. And I recite to you the following. He says, a million crusaders entered into Bayt al-Maqdis and they did with it what animals do in the forest and they perpetrated that, that which even the shaitans do not do. In one week, they killed 60,000 people. From them, the scholars, the worshippers, the imams of masajid and the ascetics. They put up the cross over Bayt al-Maqdis. They brought into Bayt al-Maqdis the pigs and replaced the adhan with the callings of disbelief and shirk. And people cried and they cried and they cried and they thought that Bayt al-Maqdis would never ever return to the control of Islam and Muslims and that there will never be an end to this trial and tribulation of the people of Islam. So the disgrace upon the believers continued until Allah raised from this ummah a hero who planted the, the love for the blood of struggling in the path of Allah flow through the veins and he planted the spirit of struggle and valor in the souls and he destroyed the pessimism that had unsheathed the hearts. So there stood the man by the name of Salahuddin and he called out from Ahmad and Jadana. He said, oh, woe to Islam on that cry. The heroes from the army of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up 
until they met the crusaders and they killed 30,000 of them and they opened up Al-Quds and they purified the sacred lands from the evil ones. Their victory continued until the crusaders had no option but to pay the jizya from a lowly hand after the crusaders had been the commanders in authority in power for 91 years. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, those who are despairing about the situation of the Ummah. By Allah, it could be we are on that 90th year. We could be on the 90th year, the year before Allah gives this Ummah victory. You know what? It could be Allah laughing at this Ummah because His mercy is just about to come. Never despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs>so the muslim nowadays muslim can't go there they can't worship there they can't pray there and they can't they can't visit to visit to this mosque mm. uh, before it was the resting resting place it's all the resting place for prophets uh, the prophets they came there and the uh, companions of prophets they came there they was resting there and they were um, studying they were learning islamic knowledge inside of this mosque but nowadays we can't go there if we go there we'll got problem mm. we can't go there we can't pray uh, in this mosque and we uh, can't visit this mosque uh, but this mosque is our mosque but mm. unfortunately it's under the jewish so mm. what can we do what is the solution to yeah. uh, taking it back okay so uh, we we are muslims but we we have problem is we are disorganized mm. we don't have organization mm. we don't have community we don't have uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, differences we have division mm. between the muslims mm. so uh, I, I wanted to say if we want to uh, take it back uh, if we want to protect in this mosque, yeah. we must have a community, mm. a strong community. Mm. We must have a, we must unite it. Uh, and we, if we will try, mm. if we will try, if we will have community in every Muslim's country, yeah. like in every Muslim's country, have a community to protect Al-Aqsa or like uh, save Gaza, save Al-Aqsa. You know, every day the Palestine Muslims, they are killing by the Israel. They are our brothers, our mm. sisters. They they have responsibility of the Al Aqsa. They are trying to protect it. Mm. But wha what happened? The another Muslims, mm. another countries Muslims. Mm. Uh, we are we are watching to this killing. They are our brother, our sister. They they was killing there, and uh, they wanted to protect Al Aqsa. But why? We are silent. Why we don't want, why we uh, are not trying to protect Al-Aqsa. Yeah. So we must be organized. Mm. We must have uh, a unit. Mm. We must have unit. We have, must have community organization to protect Al-Aqsa in every country. So I think this is a good first step. Yeah. Uh, the solution to uh, regaining control over Al-Aqsa is having stronger unity throughout the Muslim world. Yes. Right? Um, and I think this is a very important step. Yeah. Um, a Sheikh, Muslim unity, uh, and um, what, what else do you think is important towards regaining control uh, after we've achieved more, s more, more I unity? I think that you know, my, my experience and, and, and my uh, opinion on this mm -hmm. differs from all, all the, all the <laughs> Ummah as a whole. Okay. Because for nearly 70 years, we have been trying and trying and trying and nothing's worked. Mm. Isn't it time? Like, the, you know, Sheikh and Report said something very positive. Don't despair in Allah's mercy. Mm. You know, we shouldn't despair. But we shouldn't also live, as we British call it, in cloud cuckoo land. 
You understand? You British? Uh, you understand? <laughs> no. Cloud cuckoo land is where you ha you put your head in clouds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you think uh -huh. that things will happen. Ah, uh, okay. You know, we have to face the reality, and I think if we change our approach, the best way is today is the world of uh, media, the knowledge, make the world understand and know, you know, the suffering that Palestinians are going under and the, the bullying and, and, and bad and, and underhand tactics that Israelis are using. Mm -hmm. Just need to make the world aware. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sympathy for, for, for Muslims yeah. uh, in, in Palestine. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sympathy around Europe, a lot of sympathy around America, a lot of sympathy in Japan and, and China, everywhere in That's the world. Right. That's right. There is a lot of goodwill. What Muslims fail miserably is to, to, you know, to cash in on that. Mm. You know, because we have very poor strategy. We don't have a strategy. You know, everybody just stands and talks and talks and talks. Mm. You know, there's no plan. And you know, any business, any work, you know, with the best plan, and plan in the world, you know, you might fail. But if you have no plan, you are destined to fail. Now and Muslims have at the moment no plan how to take back Alexa. Mm. During the recent Israeli war in Gaza, we saw a number of uh, acts of economic sanctions being imposed, not only economic, but also academic sanctions being imposed on Israel, the Israeli government. Yes. We saw in India, uh, near your home country, Bangladesh, yes. there were uh, over a thousand restaurants and hotels that were boycotting not only Israeli products, but also uh, U.S. products like Coke yes. and Pepsi. Uh, they were losing, uh, I think, up to about $300,000 in, in, in every day during the month of, of Ramadan. Do you think that this direction, th these sanctions against uh, Israel, we'll leave America aside for now, uh, economic and academic sanctions, like we saw a group of students in South Africa uh, cancel uh, arrangements, academic arrangements they have with uh, 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 universities in Israel. Do you think that this will be helpful? I, I, we talked about the importance of solidarity. Uh, we talked about just accepting, the Sheikh is saying, just accepting the will of Allah in our situation, whether we it's good or bad. I think this is also very important on the spiritual level, accepting what Allah has ordained. Uh, but then going back to practical uh, material world, do you think sanctions would be useful? Uh, well, you know, e economics is important for every country. Mm. So if we uh, protect Al-Aqsa Mosque, we must have uh, economic situation is very strong. Uh, the Muslims in my country or in India or any country's Muslims, they are, uh, they are trying to uh, boycott, they are boycott the uh, products of Israel. Mm. In my country, I was traveled there, I saw the Muslims, uh, the religious people, they are boycotting the uh, products of uh, uh, Israel. Oh, sorry, Israel I'm sorry, products. repeat this again. You saw in your country. In my country, yes. Expatriates, people from Israel. No, I mean the people from Bangladesh. Oh, okay, okay. People from right. Bangladesh, they are Muslims and they're religious. Yes. They are boycotting the products of Israel. Yes, okay. Because of uh, uh, Muslims in Palestine and yes, because yeah. of Al-Aqsa. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to buy the products of uh, Israel's. They want to right. boycott it and they want to help the Muslims in Palestine. And, and this, this issue of boycotts and sanctions, divestments, it's very lightly, if ever, uh, covered in Western media. Yes. Uh, it's uh, quite extensive, the number of countries uh, that are involved in this BDS movement, boycott, divestment, and sanctions. Yes. Uh, we've seen award-winning scientists like Stephen Hawking uh, cancel uh, engagements that he had with Israel, performers, entertainers from the U.S. like Stevie Wonder. And, uh, he's a legendary figure. Cancel concerts. I mean, you, you hardly ever hear this kind of stuff uh, in Western media. So I think, you know, maybe we're getting, uh, we're, we're, we're perhaps, we have to c consider the fact of Western coverage of media, uh, that we may have more solidarity. Maybe we're gaining more traction than we're aware of. I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, and to the second yeah. thing, uh, if we want to protect the Al-Aqsa Mosque, mm. we, have, we must have a good preparation from now. Uh, the Muslims, uh, uh, the I saw the Palestine, 
they are always trying to protect it. But we have responsibility too. We can uh, prefer, we can take good preparation for protect it in economics, mm. in politics, yeah. in education, mm. in um, culture, mm. uh, or we can uh, do it in Dawa by Islamic scholar mm. or in social media. If you talk about politics, you know the politics in Israel is uh, so better than the Muslims' politics. Uh, in Muslims country, there are politics, but the problem is our politics is not Islamic politics. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to do Islamic politics that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did, Islamic politics. Mm. But well, our politics is not uh, Islamic politics. So if our politics, if our political situation is Islamic and uh, we will prefer, uh, we'll prefer to protect Al-Aqsa and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. So uh, firstly, we have to uh, be strong in politically to protect it. Uh, you know, in Egypt uh, or in the another country nearest to Palestine, if the government, if the uh, government of country, the president of country, if they aren't, if they aren't to protect Al-Aqsa, it's so very easy for you them. You mean, you mean the, the heads of state, the leaders in Muslim countries? Y yes, yes. Ah, so we're putting pressure a little bit on the leaders, the heads of state, the top officials, diplomats from Muslim countries. They could do more. May, do you think that Maybe they're beholden, uh, they have some. I mean, we never know what's, what happens when you get in office, uh, the different arrangements and, and pressures. Uh, but but we, we can expect and demand more of our Muslim leaders to be more engaged, more involved, uh, not only in Al-Aqsa, but all of, all of Palestine. It's difficult to separate Al-Aqsa from Palestine. Mm -hmm. This is a huge issue, a 66-year-old issue. And so it's hard to talk about Al-Aqsa without addressing the situation of the Palestinians mm. in general. Um, okay, yes, so. Uh, and you know, a lot of Muslims in every Muslim country, they don't know, they don't have good idea about Al-Aqsa Mosque. What is the Al-Aqsa Mosque? What is the value of Al-Aqsa Mosque? So uh, if uh, the scholars, they, uh, they are uh, talking about, uh, about Al-Aqsa and giving information about Al-Aqsa to uh, the Muslims in every country, if they talk in uh, Juma, in uh, their sermon, or if in their uh, conference, or in any mm. place they are uh, doing da'wah, they will talk about Al-Aqsa Mosque, what is the significance of Al-Aqsa Mosque, and why we should need it, and why we must protect it. Uh, we must know the Muslims, they don't know it. So must have education about Al-Aqsa. Yeah, this must is have another, education. Sheikh, I think he's right. This is another good step towards a solution, keeping Al-Aqsa uh, at the tip of our tongue. Yes, I think the, uh, it's the awareness. The mm. awareness of the issue mm. amongst Muslims and non-Muslims. Mm. I think it's, uh, it's very important. You know, the, uh, we, our children, again, uh, that Muslims living in the West can have a, a big impact on this. Mm. But the thing is that this, the Muslims in the West are so disconnected with their countries and with the, you know, with the Muslim world, and they're, they're not really interested because nobody's really preparing them. Mm, yeah. I'll give you an example mm. of Israelis in one year. Mm -hmm. They sponsored a million children, Jewish, Jewish children from West to become the, the hosts, the guests of the, the Israeli government. A million children from America, Canada, Europe, to come to Israel in one year mm -hmm. to know about Israel. Wow. Yeah? That's, that's a very strong program. Well, yeah. I'm telling you that we don't have no programs, we don't have no plan. Mm. And time for us to firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly says in Quran that I never change the condition of a nation until they change themselves. And we are so, so far away from our deen, which I'm sorry, I, you, know, I've conf you know, every time I come on this program, I, I try to shake out the Muslims. You know, we are a long way away from our deen, and we need to come back and pray and then gain knowledge, because knowledge today is the power. And we have to, you know, our, our elders, you know, have to encourage the youth to go as far as they can, push them, you know, to gain knowledge, because knowledge is what's going to change, and knowledge is what's empowered Israel. Mm. Knowledge is what's empowered the United States. But today we are furthest away from knowledge. And when it comes to, it comes to European intellects, so many times the European, the British universities try to, try to break out the, like you talk about sanctions. Mm -hmm. Sanctions are never good because it doesn't really bother them. 
mm. few few hundred thousand and a few million there mm. they're they're so powerful and they've got so much money that you know this this is a, a very insignificant mm. for muslims maybe you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the near at your intentions and you try to please him and you try to you know you you hate what they do and you're trying to you know to 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 do something about it but you know maybe they get rewarded for it i hope they do but the thing is that you know they're never going to be biting until the united nation mm. and the united states backs them and that will never happen mm. that will never happen we can keep dreaming mm -hmm. what it is the reality is that we have to go come back to our deen mm -hmm. and we have to gain the knowledge and we have to put our differences away and and united and that's the only way the only way we peace or war i don't know how we're going to get it back but that's the only way we'll get it back <coughs> is by empowering ourselves you know weak in this world brother ali you know you've traveled around the world does does you know uh, anybody care about weak you know our deen tells us to care about weak but that's about it <laughs> you know the world today is you know if, if you got the the, the stick mm -hmm. the world is running in front of you yeah i i, I want you got if you got the carrot they're behind you yeah <laughs> yeah so so thing is that you know that uh. really the muslims have to have to get that soft power that hard power mm -hmm. back and it's not going to happen overnight you was telling you know asking me whether it's going to happen in our lifetime or not yeah yeah i would love it to happen sure in my lifetime but but what i would want the israeli government mm. because i know their people will be watching mm. what i want them to know is that whilst they're there in charge you know because things can change and they will change and you know you treat muslims just the way you want to be treated because that wall that you're building around jerusalem mm -hmm. You know, when Sla next Salah Deen comes, when he comes, when the next Omar comes, those walls are not going to stand in their way. Mm. Let me tell you, if, if the, uh, the, like, uh, the, the powerful nation like the United States wants to, wants to take back the, the Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, do you think you know, Israel uh, walls and can, can, uh, can stop, stop it? it? No. Mm. When, when, when the Muslims do gain that power, which mm. I'm sure they will, inshallah, inshallah, you know, then these are stupid things to do. So whilst they're in control, mm. be sensible. And, and, and just punish Muslims as much as the punishment you can take one day. Because, you know, you will, you will if it will, what goes around, comes around. Yeah, yeah, I want to I wanna catch and run with one thing you said about these programs, these educational student exchange programs. You said that there were a million, uh, one million. Israeli children. That's about 10 years ago. Children, uh, a part of this program, going to Israel, learning about the, the deep uh, Jewish heritage, uh, which we, we should respect. Now, so, so this I is another a step th that we talked about, the putting pressure on the politicians, those in government. It, it wouldn't take much. You know, just set aside two or three million dollars. Just, just gra take a few uh, dozens of that. children and bring them to some of the holy sites, in, including Al-Aqsa, mm, yeah. to keep, the, the, keep it alive in, in the new generation. I, I think respect them for that because their Jewish connections were weakening. Hmm. You know, with the, with the Jews in the West, they were, they were losing that that connection with the with the Jewish state and they to strengthen that you see just look deep into that you mm -hmm. know how effective and, and powerful that is yeah yeah it's, it's very uh, potent uh, you know and, and I can I can give you dozens of other examples mm. the way they strengthen their nation but thing is that they're condemned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is you know where the, th the punishment comes to them every now and then mm. which is very sad to say that you know because there's a lot of good Jewish people out there and they suffer just as much as the Zionists when the, when the punishment comes. I, I want to ask about uh, some of the um, uh, more extreme Jews. Uh, they talk about their right to Al-Aqsa, saying that it goes back to Jewish history in, in the Torah, in the, the Jewish history, uh, that this is the, the temple built by uh, Solomon. And so this, is, this belongs to uh, not the Muslims, uh, but, but to the Jews. And so... Uh, can you talk about this claim that it, that it belongs to Solomon? You want, you want me to, to clarify that? Uh, it's open. Well, <laughs> uh, let me tell you <laughs> that I, I tell all, you know, I have, you know, and I, I, I say this, and uh, I have many of my customers mm -hmm. who are Jews in my business, and I have a good cordial relationship with them. So I, I talk to them and I tell them that, right, this was built by Suleiman being your prophet. You, you, acknowledge, also, you acknowledge that yeah, it acknowledge was that. in fact... It was built by Solomon. By Solomon, okay. But, but le uh, let me tell you, I said, you was waiting for a prophet 
around about the time that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, you were waiting for somebody to come according to your scri scripture. Yeah. And then he came because he didn't come from the, your lineage. You don't accept it. You didn't recognize but it. But you mm -hmm. were on Islam. Moses were on Islam. And that same Islam exists today. Why don't you come and join us? And we're together. The thing is, the solution is not fighting. Solution is sit down and see where the right is, where the haq is, and the truth is, and then accept that. And inshallah, you know, we are, we are, we are slowly but surely winning that war because the thing is that the, the war ideas, you know, the problem with today with Muslims, our, our uh, so, so called Muslim brothers, like in Boko Haram and, and Mus IS, they are giving Islam and Muslims such a bad publicity and bad name, which we could do without. We really need to, to counter the fears and the problems of the West because the Islam and Muslims are not to be feared. You see, right. it's, it's the duty of Muslims, it's our duty to, to lay those fears to rest. You know, and, and show these people the, the, the compassionate nature of uh, Islam and its prophet. And that's what we, you know, where we're going to win the hearts and minds. And that is how we're going to get the Alexa back. Okay, Sheikh, let me interrupt you. We're almost out of time. We got about one minute left. I want to ask uh, Brother Habibur, um, I'm still struggling with your name. It's okay. <laughs> um, the Sheikh said he acknowledges when he talks with his Jewish uh, customers, his clients, yeah, okay, uh, Solomon did build the temple. Um, uh, talk more about uh, the view. A, lo a lot of times I think people who, are not, who, don't un who don't understand Islam think that Islam began with Prophet Muhammad uh, in the 6th century uh, and that the Hijra date, the 1436, the year that we're in now, this is the age of Islam. Uh, to open this up for us a little more, he, he talked about Solomon, in fact, building a temple, but it doesn't remove the fact that it's an Islamic uh, site. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Jews, they are uh, telling this is the, this, it's their place. Yes. The mosque Al-Aqsa is their place, and it's the Jewish or Yehudi's uh, mosque. But actually, uh, the Sulaiman Sulaiman, he built this mosque, but uh, is uh, this mosque uh, from Muslims mosque? Mm. You know, it was the first Qibla we talked about it, yes. uh, and uh, it's the second mosque uh, in the art. Uh, so this is our place, our mosque. But mm. why they want it? Because it has a lot of belu. It's uh, it's uh, it's important mosque. For, so for yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So they want uh, so they want this mosque, and they want uh, they want uh, it, this mosque will be there under their uh, rule. But it's really our place and we must take it, we must take it back and we must uh, uh, protect this mosque. So that we talked about if we had preparation uh, to protect in this mosque about uh, political or economic or education, yes. or in uh, Islamic dawah, or in culture, or in social media, yes. if we have good preparation, mm -hmm. we can try to protect in this mosque, we can say to the governments of uh, uh, Israel, this is ours, and we can make them understanding how it's our place, yeah. how it's our mosque. We can make them understanding. After that, we can tell them it give us to back. Give it if back. they can't, if they can't, if they prohibit it, we can declaration about al jihad in Islam mm. because they they want to give our right. It's our right. They want to give us so we can declare for jihad and fighting with them. After that, we can fight with them. There, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in Quran, fighting with them. After that, uh, we can back it from them from uh, because okay. it's ours and uh, right. All right. Well, we we. Um have just a couple seconds left. Couple <laughs> seconds. <laughs> 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 I'll see what it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, any closing uh, remarks before we close out? I think uh, you know for the lis uh, listening brothers and sisters uh, all over the world, the Muslims yeah. uh, I'm ad addressing to, they must firstly come back to, to Islam, pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, ask for the forgiveness, you know, of the Ummah today, mm. because we are a long, long way from our Deen. Mm. We need to come back to it, and we need to appreciate the knowledge, and we must must you know strengthen our ranks mm. by getting rid of the differences mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. thing is that you know we we are weakening from within
Mm -hmm. We know we can't blame the world out there and we can't fight jihad against everybody everybody mm -hmm. when we are so weak within mm -hmm. and I think that you know Muslims uh, in, in my lifetime uh, you know we've been damaged more from within than outside forces yeah and you know of course you know if, if you if you if you're fighting the, the you know the, the outside forces they will fight you back mm -hmm. but thing is that you know we do more damage from within Mm -hmm. than the the outside forces of course you know i mean uh, people out there like i said europe is, is 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 fearful of islam and muslims america is we need to we need to counter that fear we need to we need to show them yeah. the compassionate nature of islam and that's not just one person duty that's the muslims all over there's a lots of us in number mm -hmm. what we need to do and we must we must give that positive positive image of islam Tamen. and we need to win okay. the, the friends we will leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Shabir from uh, the UK, and also our brother from Bangladesh, Habibur Rahman. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll conclude uh, this discussion about Al Aqsa. Please stay tuned. We'll continue Hada tonight with our next subject uh, regarding uh, common dental uh, problems. Uh, Salam alaikum. We'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hara tonight. We'll continue our social segment this evening uh, with a discussion about dental uh, diseases. Uh, we're joined this uh, evening uh, by Dr. Mahmoud Sharawi. Assalamu alaikum to you, Dr. Alaikum salam. Thank you very much for being with us. We're going to talk about some common dental problems. Yes. Um, uh, how would you like to uh, start? Uh, what are some of the most common dental uh, problems and diseases that we encounter? Just let me start off saying. It's my pleasure to be here, Hoda, tonight. Uh, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful, may Allah send his peace and blessings upon his final prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his households and his companions and those who follow him till the resurrection day. Hmm. Uh, let me start off saying, today we're going to discuss the common dental problems. Okay. Why? Because understanding is the integral part of motivation yes we need to motivate people to take care of their teeth because it's a very important to uh, take care of your teeth because it's a mirror mm. to your body health mm. uh, so we have here uh, common dental problems and to simplify things we will put them in two main categories okay that one of them the first category will be diseases related to destructing the tooth structure itself okay uh, which is caries and dental cavities, okay? Okay. And diseases related to the tissues surrounding the tooth, which is periodontal diseases. All right, so destruction to the actual tooth itself. Yes. And to the environment, uh, the soft tissue around yes, the tooth. Yes, soft tissue and the hard tissue around the tooth. The tooth, okay. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, start with the first category, which is... Uh, dental caries Kay. or dental cavity. Caries actually it's a Latin word mm -hmm. means rotten. Rotten, okay. Mm -hmm. So dental cavities, okay. Uh, some people uh, they have that uh, uh, funny uh, thought about uh, dental cavity which is a, they thought dental cavity it's a worm, okay, mm. uh, which is not. <laughs> actually when the food debris, the food deposits, are allowed to stay for, for long mm -hmm. on the pits and feathers of the, uh, of the uh, uh, chewing surfaces of the tooth okay. Okay, or, any, or any hidden site mm -hmm. uh, of, of the tooth that uh, make the bacteria that uh, live normally in our mouth mm -hmm. to feed on them, mm. producing acid. That mm. acid dissolves mm the outer layer mm -hmm. of the tooth which is enamel enamel okay uh, making its way to the second layer which is dentin mm. and can go more farther mm. to hurting the core of the tooth which is pulp which is an organ okay that contains the cells and the blood vessels uh, and the in innervation all, all of the, the all the highly sensitive parts right Th yes, this is the core the, the sensitive parts mm. And the worst case scenario mm -hmm. is to uh, affect that uh, pulp in an irreversible 
way mm. and that will cause uh, and that will cause us maybe the tooth itself okay or uh, to do a root canal treatment okay at, at, at the end so it's uh, you can prevent okay. that from the very beginning and we have here uh, know the other uh, the other video mm. uh, guys the first one which is dental cavities actually uh, I hope the uh, this is the process uh, this is this of a, uh, accumulating yeah. the food and a bacteria yes uh, okay uh, in the uh, in the side su surface of the of the tooth, mm -hmm. okay, in the uh, between the tooth and the gingiva, which is the gums, mm -hmm. okay, making hard material which is calculus, okay, can just be removed uh, with a dental uh, dental instrument. And here is when the when the calculus and the biofilm and the bacteria are allowed to stay longer, mm -hmm. it will affect. Uh, the the soft tissue, okay, and make it into a ticary action mm -hmm. uh -huh, to increase the blood flow, make it uh, as oh. you see oh. red and tender, mm -hmm. and 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 has tendency to bleed mm. easily. Mm -hmm. And if that continues, it will destroy mm. the uh, att the ligaments, the attachment mm. of the of the soft tissue to the tooth and to the bone. Mm -hmm. Boon, uh, uh, supporting the tooth itself, and it's irreversible. Uh, uh, it's irreversible, uh, and it's reversible disease called periodontitis. Mm -hmm. Okay, periodontitis, and this is the worst case scenario here, to have like gingival uh, recession, mm -hmm. and eventually loss of the teeth, mm -hmm. and the loss of the teeth affect the joints the jaw joints mm -hmm. of the mouse uh, and uh, maybe uh, uh, a bit of uh, discomfort mm -hmm. to the people and sunken cheeks and, and so that and maybe it go farther and the bacteria leak into the blood vessel the mm -hmm. circulatory system of the body and may cause a brain stroke mm. and heart diseases mm -hmm. and we have like a disease called uh, um, endocarditis mm -hmm. and the bacteria that cause endocarditis, subacute bacterial endocarditis, uh, it's called uh, Streptococcus viridinus, which is mainly found in the uh, plaque and uh, the calculus and the bacteria that uh, destruct, uh, the, the which is destructive to the tooth structure. It also destruct the heart. This is, I didn't realize that this can be very, this become very serious. A very serious issue. A mm. stroke. It can lead d uh, poor dental health or hygiene can lead to a stroke. Uh, ultimately. Ultimately, not yes, not ultimately. over, not quickly over a week yes, not or not a month or, over a week or a month or mm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And and maybe uh, it's risk factor. Uh huh. Okay. It's a risk factor. It's there, a in, in other words, there's some uh, g genetics is involved that can lead make some people more. Maybe uh, genetics is involved. Okay. And uh, and and I the. Uh, the general status of the person itself, the general uh, mm. health of it, okay. uh, of, uh, of him, mm. uh, may lead uh, to uh, a, yeah, accelerating that, pro uh, that process. Ah, okay. okay. Like maybe what, if they're already ill? Uh, Diabetic, ah, okay. pregnant, mm. some conditions, some mm. risk factors, okay, that can lead to, uh, to that. But we can save us uh, the whole travel doing it. I'm going to ask them to uh, display the uh, the other video which mm. is dental cavities again to show our our viewers mm -hmm. how dental caries uh, actually occur and how it uh, uh, advanced to uh, to the pulp and to the this process uh, I imagine the time it takes to erode the different layers takes uh, vary the time varies depending on each individual is this correct yes mm. it's yeah. Uh, actually, uh, thank you for that question. It's a mm. very good question here. Uh, actually, it's time dependent, and uh, like like uh, like uh, I said earlier, mm -hmm. it's health status, yes. general health oh. status dependent also, because uh, w when the people are suffering from a disease like uh, diabetic or uh, or he 
or he is a heavy smoker, yeah. not just deceased with something. Mm. He is a heavy smoker, mm -hmm. or he, uh, or she is pregnant, yeah. or something like that. The immune system in such cases are at the lowest uh, level of its uh, mm. uh, mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes, sometimes the bacteria find there is no uh, enemy for it to fight. No so defense. Ah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is no defense mechanism. So they can walk right in and do whatever they want. Yes, <laughs> like that. Yeah. That is, yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and, and we need to prevent what we can from the very beginning. Mm. Uh, it's actually, uh, it doesn't take that much time to clean, uh, to clean, to brush, uh, that is on daily basis, twice a day, mm -hmm. and to prevent the, the heavy consumption of, energy drinks, mm. uh, you know, energy, and uh, the sticky uh, sweets mm. between meals. Ca uh, candies. Uh, candies, yes. Uh, Especially between meals. Uh, if you have them, uh, like, during the meal or something like that, uh -huh. it, it, it wouldn't be that hard. Okay. Uh, but if you uh, consume this mm -hmm. uh, uh, between meals, uh, here here is a risk factor. Okay. Um. So here, uh, yes, that video takes us to the effect of smoking, mm -hmm. okay, on our body. Most people, uh, they know uh, that smoking is linked to uh, many diseases like cancer mm -hmm. uh, and, la and, uh, and actually every disease uh, known to mankind. I related smoke to smoking. Yes, mm -hmm. related to smoking. Uh, but here is smoking uh, can affect the, the smokers. Uh, who are most likely to uh, to lose their uh, their teeth mm. uh, than anybody uh, else mm. uh, because of what because of smoking reduce the amount of saliva mm. and reducing the amount of saliva it's a uh, very dangerous mm. because saliva washes like you see washes the the uh, the bacteria okay washing action of the saliva mm -hmm. and the saliva also have mm. antibodies Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. that fight the the, the microbes and bacteria, mm -hmm. uh, and smoking too uh, constrict the blood vessels, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. weakening and uh, and debilitating the immune system. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that and that uh, damaging to the immune system. Uh, okay, uh, prevent the body to fight the. Uh, bacteria yeah. in, a, in a proper way. Um, you said that, that the time period of erosion, uh, can you give us a, like a, a minimum and maximum time? Uh, let's say someone doesn't have good uh, hygiene, maybe they're not, uh, and by the way, if let's say the ideal thing is that we brush, what if just rinsing, will that help after uh, drinks and meals and candy? Was that enough to at least give us a, 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 a little bit of an edge, just rinsing with water or is it not very effective? Okay. Uh, let's assume somebody even brush uh, his, teeth, his teeth on a regular basis, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, twice daily, but in a, in a proper way. Mm. Uh, that won't help. Mm. Because of what? Because your tooth mm -hmm. has many surfaces. It's just uh, not uh, just the front and uh, yeah. like that. It's, yeah. uh, it's okay. It has many surfaces. Mm -hmm. Okay. And keep that in mind. And this is will help. And uh, starting from the uh, posterior region, because the posterior region most likely to have the most of the crowns, bridges, and fillings. Mm -hmm. uh, pa posterior and, uh, meaning the, 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 the back. The back region. The back, oh. the back region. Mm -hmm. the, the big tooth uh, uh, at the back mm. of your mouth. Okay. Okay. But why? why the, the average person by the age of 50 mm -hmm. are most likely to have a crown, crowns mm -hmm. and bridges, uh, fillings and partial prosthesis, even um, a complete uh, prosthesis, mm. okay, in that time. Because that posterior, that back of the mouth, yeah. suffer always from brushing deficiencies. Uh, because uh, because of, because of what we're because lazy? we are less motivated uh. to brush all the all the sides all the aspects of our tooth. Uh. So brushing so we, so them we correctly. Need, we need motivation. We need motivation <laughs> to know the process. Yeah. And I need the guys 
behind the scene to display the <laughs> first <laughs> video, okay? Okay. <laughs> to <laughs> get that motivation uh, <laughs> to uh, the reality. Yeah, yeah. To shoot the viewers. All right. Um, we talked about... Uh, yes, here is it. Ah, uh, here it is. Yes, here it is. Uh, okay, this is grooves mm -hmm. and pits, okay, and the, uh, the chewing surfaces and the inside surfaces, and this is most likely to develop uh, caries. So it is very important to brush our teeth twice daily. Mm. Okay, and this is uh, uh, actually with minimizing the consumption of sugar uh, mm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and energy drinks and, uh, and, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and here is it, if the bacteria and the food yeah. are allowed to stay that long, yep. it, the, the acids will find uh, its way to the, uh, yeah. the, the enamel and dentin. Mm. Uh, and also there is another places uh, for the bacteria to hide mm. the side surfaces. And so we need to uh, use the floss mm -hmm. uh, to get rid of that uh, fuzzy uh, plaque uh, to prevent the interproximal caries like this the interproximal mm, theories. Between Beca the teeth. Yes, mm. uh, because it's required after that to even remove uh, some of the healthy structure of the, of the tooth to fix it. Mm, mm -hmm, yeah. To put the filling itself. Uh, so it's uh, very important here too, uh, to angle uh, the bristle uh, tips okay, between, the t between the sides of the tooth uh -huh. to eliminate. Yeah, so, so, so the purpose of brushing is, is really just to remove microscopic organisms. Yes, to remove them. Hmm. But uh, the microscopic organisms is, uh, store uh, to produce acids uh, just after eating. Mm -hmm. So wait 15 minutes. Uh -huh. To brush. To brush, ah. to brush. Uh, and uh, just like I said, the, the longer you brush your teeth, the less motivated. Uh, so start from the hardest, uh, the, the hardest area, the back of the mouth, mm -hmm. and start with the uh, surfaces related to the tongue and palate, okay? okay. And the upper and lower jaw, mm -hmm. uh, and, and just remove uh, the debris from them, and then start to the chewing surfaces, and make your way to the front. Ah, okay. Uh, I want to ask you about education, raising awareness uh, in Egypt. Uh, I remember growing up in the United States, there were a lot of things available to us to help young children. I remember I still have very vivid memories of growing up, uh, different things on the cartoons in the morning. Mm -hmm. There was a whole series dedicated to a family of toothbrushes, uh, th and they animated these toothbrushes. Uh, and talk, and a, they animated the cavities. They really tried to motivate in schools. They talked about what about in, in education uh, in in Egypt? Yeah, hopefully uh, nowadays the public awareness uh, has been raising. Mm. Okay, uh, because uh, a lot of people now are more educated than before, and a lot of youth they trying to get their communities involved in the modern uh, stuff and to uh, take care of uh, and take care of their of their teeth and their life uh, also uh, and and we do that uh, in our uh, community uh, nowadays to it's very slow process actually I, I have to admit that but I think it will be inshallah uh, at the future uh, something real on the ground and something that all of the people practice. So, so this is an area of growth. Uh, the associations, is there a, an association of dentists in Egypt? Maybe they can lobby and put pressure on the government to include this in the education, the curriculum uh, in the schools. Yes, uh, yes. Ac actually, uh, we need to um, change the perspective of the people about the, the, the dentistry and dental hygiene. Mm -hmm. Uh, not just uh, the, the government to uh, uh, force them to uh, study something or to know something be because it, it is not effective enough. Uh. Okay. Actually, maybe it's, uh, it's already involved in, uh, in, in, the, cur in the curriculum mm. the the students study, but it is not part of their uh, daily practices. Mm. Mm -hmm. we There's need no re uh, reinforcement. It's not yes, mm. we need to manipulate uh, their thoughts mm. <laughs> again <laughs> <laughs> in a good way <laughs> in a good way yeah, yeah. Uh, to uh, help them realize mm. that it is very important, very uh, important. Uh, yeah, yeah tremendously important mm. of a prime importance to take care of the of their teeth L let's talk about the profile of people who are more prone uh, to problems uh, with uh, 
we talk so far about people who uh, have poor practices. They're not uh, brushing regularly. Um, we talked about people who have compromised or weak immunes because of uh, illness or pregnancy. Uh, what other kinds of uh, 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 profiles can we point to? People who are more likely or less likely uh, to get have problems with uh, cavities and this whole issue. We already discussed that earlier. Before. We did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let's uh, uh, let us show the uh, the viewers mm -hmm. uh, that that uh, some people uh, like the people live in Asia, for example, okay. are most likely to develop uh, calculus. And calculus, uh, which is the the, the hard uh, material mm -hmm. uh, that came out from the plaque and bacteria. All right. Okay? The hard material. Hard material. Uh -huh. Yeah. And less likely to develop caries, now, dental now caries, dental cavity. You're saying that uh, uh, people from Asia, like the Far East in Asia, yes. are more likely to develop this hard material as a defense, a natural defense. Not natural defense. Okay. Uh, most, li uh, most likely to have that dental problem. Ah, so it's a naturally occurring yes. problem. Yes, uh, it's a natural excessive uh, yes. calci calcium. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, calculus. It's calculus. Uh, the hard material that came out from bacteria and black when uh, when it is uh, when are uh, when are allowed to stay for uh, so long uh, between the soft tissue of the gums mm -hmm. and the hard uh, hard tissues of the uh, of the tooth. So this means they're less likely in the less Far East to have uh, cavities. Yes, to have cavities. This yes. is amazing uh, to and me. As you said, we talked about this earlier and um, we're, we're almost out of time. We're, we have just a, a couple minutes left. Um, what else did you want to uh, talk about before we close out uh, the segment? Uh, just uh, I, 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 want I want each and everybody yes. to know uh, that guys, it is it won't take time mm. to take care of your teeth, yeah. but it will take uh, much, much more, more time to go to dentist and to spend money and time That's right. and effort. That's right. Uh, okay, uh, which uh, on something uh, which you can prevent from mm. the very beginning. That's right. But just uh, uh, get rid of the food remnants uh, and make yourself. Uh, appealing to the others when you smile, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> the the Prophet mm. uh, said in his hadith, "Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa." When you smile, mm -hmm. it's a charity. So yeah, it's a charity right, to smile. Right. So have good teeth to s to have a good smile yeah. to the others. Hey, oh, one last question: You brought up the Prophet, peace be upon him. In his time, uh, they you did they use the sticks? Uh, can you comment? This is a common practice I see here yes. in Egypt. Uh, are these sticks uh, yeah. useful? Are they uh, destructive? Are they helpful? What are your comments about? Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu used to use miswak, which a tooth stick. Mm. Okay, come, uh, comes from a tree called Arak mm. as uh, as a tool uh, to eliminate the food debris, and mm. uh, it was of his sunnah, mm. uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm. And it uh, uh, back at the time, it, it was the only thing that can ri get rid of their food debris. Mm. Okay, but okay. now we have toothbrushes and uh, toothpaste that may, may be more effective, effective yeah. uh, than miswak. But it is okay to use miswak as, as soon as to okay. eliminate uh, uh. the food debris. Okay, thank, thank you so you. much. I just wanted to confirm whether or not it was okay to or not. Thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Sharawi. Uh, he is a dentist here in uh, Cairo, Egypt. We do appreciate you so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. Please, he's saying he's urging you, uh, continue to have a daily practice of removing debris from your mouths. I encourage people around you to do the same. Inshallah, you can eliminate the cost and the pain, the agony of going through dental diseases. Uh, inshallah. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. This will conclude Huda tonight for tonight. Inshallah, we'll be back uh, tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.